Call to order. May 18th, meeting of the Ascension Parish Council. Would you please stand for the prayer? Be led tonight by Martin McConnell. And the pledge, and I'd like to ask, we have two uh, young scouts, Mr. Barton Mayo and Caleb Coleman, who will lead us in the pledge. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the freedom that you have given us to gather here peacefully in your name. Please put your hand on our shoulders and guide us as we try to do the work of your people. Please see to it that we do the best that we can and the best guidance that you can give us to do the best work possible for them. Father, we ask you to look over and put your hand upon all of those people who are suffering tonight, all of those people who are still out of their homes from the flood from last year, all of those people who are, are suffering or having troubles. We ask you especially to consider our brother, Mr. Oscar Jap Hardy, who was a former bridge supervisor of Ascension Parish uh, government and he, the father of our uh, supervisor, Mr. Stephen Hardy. He passed away this morning. Take him into your bosom with you and please give peace and comfort to his family. And as always, we ask you to look after our brothers and sisters in uniform who are protecting us and protecting our way of life. Please bring them home to their families safely and soon. Amen. Amen. Join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. A roll call, Madam Secretary. Looks like we have the full council here tonight. I have uh, one chair addition. I'd like to uh, make one uh, change to the agenda. So the, fir the chair addition, like for this to be added as item number uh, 10A, and I'll read this. Due to the current number of roofs that require major repairs and or replacement, and given the cost associated exceed the threshold of $150,000, Ascension Parish is required to pursue a bid for all work under the works of public works. All works of public works require an architect or an engineer complete a certified design. In order to quickly turn around designs and then proceed to procurement on construction, we need to select and begin work with an engineering firm as soon as possible. The time sensitivity, thus the reason for our request, is the clerk of court west and the courthouse east house sensitive originals and documentations are a prior priority. We are requesting your assistance in expediting this process by adding it to the agenda from Thursday, May 18th <coughs> council. Entertain a motion. motion. Motion, is there a second? Second. I have a second. This, this requires 100%. Uh, Madam Secretary, if you will, call roll. Councilman Turner. Yes. Councilman Satterley. Yes. Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Yes. Councilman Kluot. Yes. Councilman Joseph. Yes. Councilman Lawler. Yes. Councilwoman Casso. Yes. Councilman Todd Lambert. Yes. Councilman Cagnolotti. Yes. Councilman Johnson. Yes. Chairman Dawson. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, a second item, I'd like to move item number, item number eight to uh, item 6A, uh, so we have some distinguished guests. Maybe they don't want to sit through the whole. So I'd like so to ask it, a motion. Second. Second. Roll call, Madam Secretary. Councilman Turner. Yes. Councilman Satterley. Yes. Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Yes. Councilman Kluot. Yes. Councilman Joseph. Yes. Councilman Lawler. Yes. Councilwoman Casso. Yes. Councilman Todd Lambert. Yes. Councilman Cagnolotti. Yes. Councilman Johnson. Yes. Chairman Dawson. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, public uh, comment sign-in period. So if you'd like to comment on an agenda item, please uh, pick up a, a form at the podium and return that to Secretary McKee. Tonight uh, we have some presentations. Is that going to be uh, Mr. McConnell or 
uh, Parish President Matassa. Anything I'll do, group, please come up. Thank y'all for coming to the meeting tonight. How you doing? Okay. Whereas anything outdoor helping kids, a nonprofit 501c organization that started in June of 2016, and whereas anything outdoor helps kids was inspired by the illness of Preston Heath who was diagnosed with a rare and life-threatening blood disorder, and whereas Preston Heath endured months of unsuccessful treatments before he finally transformed to St. Jude Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee, and whereas aggressive chemotherapy followed by bone marrow transplants finally cured Preston Heath of his disease. And whereas the gratitude of Preston's parents, Jacob and Renee Heath, along with Michael Meir, Matt Bourgeois, Jordan Villamu, Chet Babin, Chase Babin, Wesley Tomplay, Brooks Moran, and Ryan Hornet, formed Anything Outdoors Helping Kids as their means to, su to support St. Jude's families and give the money to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and the Dreams Come True Foundation. And where it has beginning in 2018, Anything Outdoors Helping Kids will bring sick kids outdoors on hunting and fishing excursions. Now, therefore, I, Kenny Matassa, President of Parish of Ascension, State of Louisiana, by virtue and authority vested in me, do hereby proclaim May 18th 2017 as Anything Outdoors Helping Kids Day in Ascension Parish and congratulations to them and their efforts to ease the, the lives of children who suffer from this disease. Thank you all very much for coming. First and foremost, I want to thank God, family, my pro staff, and field staff. I want to thank Randy Kluwat for uh, believing us in the beginning. Uh, he's always been there for us. I want to thank y'all, councilmen, for adding us to this uh, agenda, and thank y'all for the recognition. I really appreciate it. I want to thank the Paris of Ascension for supporting us. Without without anybody supporting this Paris, it wouldn't be with who we are. Uh, we strive to... Uh, it's all for the kids. I'm sorry, I'm emotional. <laughs> but uh, that's Preston, my son, that he, they speaking about right there. So they gave my son a life, so it's time. You know, it's seven years now since that, so it's, my, it's our time to give back. So this is what Anything Outdoors is about. Uh, Anything outdoors was a dream that came in reality. We look forward to working with the parish and supporting families in need. And at last, not least, thanks to all the families that have opened their door and let anything outdoors support them. May we pray for every family that has been through treatment. Thank you.
Hey, I just want to close with, uh, with letting you know, I know most of these guys, since they were Preston's age, all right, and when they say anything outdoors, they got it covered. <laughs> and uh, they uh, just just try to do good for anything, anybody. And uh, as children, we all we all have big hearts. And uh, so I just want to close with the R five hundred one C three. So if anybody sees fit for a good tax exemption, they can point it in that direction. Thank you. Thank you. Item number six, the parish president's report, President Matassa. Okay, um, I just got a few things. I want to tell y'all that uh, you remember I came to y'all that they had cut the budget of the health department of about two hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, services in the family planning area. Well, I want to tell you today, um, instead of losing services, we we picked up a few because. Dr. Adams, who has a contract with us, has hooked us up with some labs that if the, uh, if the people are indigent, they don't pay. And so that's, that's where we're at with, with, with our labs. 99% uh, of that is in that area. So we, we can do a few more uh, things that we didn't do before. So it came out, ended up being a, a good thing. It, it, we might have to adjust the budget by the end of the year, but we're not going to lose 200000 Just wanted to let y'all know. Uh, when I took office a year and a half ago, I saw an organization pieced together under three different administrations that still worked out under the police jury system. Among the first things I asked the council was to empower me to review and organize from the top to the bottom. It's been a long road, but today I have two surveys which provide us important data to begin the need for the changes. Paris government is full of great servants who wake up each morning to improve the lives and the quality of life of our residents. I want to thank my employees for all their hard work. I want them to know that I will defend them and encourage them in every step of the way in this process. A better organization means a happier workforce a happier workforce means more productivity and creativity. I'm ready to work with the council uh, to empower me to get these things done, including ratifying my employ employees and returning contract authority to the administration. Together, we can create an organization both employees and the public will be proud of. And I appreciate y'all tonight for putting that uh, emergency on there as things come up all the time. And I uh, appreciate y'all working with me. Thank you. Thank you, That's President Towns. Item number 6A, which is a resolution authorizing the Parish of Ascension, State of Louisiana, to proceed with a not to exceed $26 million financing through the Louisiana Local Government Environmental Facilities and Community Development Authority requesting the Louisiana Local Government Environmental Facilities and Community Development Authority to issue its revenue bonds and authorizing the borrowing by the Parish of Ascension of the proceeds from the sale thereof to allow it to construct, equip, furnish a building to serve as the Ascension Parish Courthouse, employing bond counsel, independent registered municipal advisor and underwriter, authorizing an application to the State Bond Commission and providing for other matters in connection therewith. So tonight, representing this, we have uh, Mr. Malcolm Duga, the uh, bond counsel. Uh, additionally, we have uh, Mr. Jason, or Judge, I'm sorry, Jason Bertigit, and Judge Tess Stoneberg, and also Clerk Hanna here representing this uh, item. Um, I think the uh, resolution uh, or the, the part of the resolution you read may have been the earlier version uh, and there was uh, an addition where it not only says to construct, equip and furnish a building to serve as the Ascension Parish Courthouse and then it also says and to renovate and convert any existing courthouse buildings. Um, I think that was an outgrowth of the meeting uh, last week. So I just wanted to bring that to the uh, attention of the council. Uh, would this resolution uh, allows uh, 
to happen is that this will start the process to um, do the bonding. Um, if we started today, uh, we couldn't close on the bonds probably until the end of August. Uh, and any, at any time during this process, the council chooses to um, stop the process, uh, revise the process, that can be done. But until this process gets started, uh, we can't end it. Uh, and I think that will give the council enough time, uh, you know, to look at the, the, the plans and whatever else needs to be done. And, uh, and I'm, I'm sure that that's what uh, these people will address in just a minute. Uh, so with that said, uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Judge Vertigets, would you like to come up? said these people, I meant these distinguished. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're too late for that, by the way. No, save it. Nice recovery, man. Nice Let recovery. me save it. I have to, these distinguished <laughs> judges. He's talking about Stromberg and Hannah. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, thank you, Chair and uh, Council, for uh, allowing me to speak today. Uh, I'm not sure how much you want to give me presentation-wise or much you'd rather me answer some questions. I can De definitely do either. Uh, I will say it's hard being on this side of it, on the hot seat. I'd much rather <laughs> sit in those chairs. I, now I know how the people feel in my courtroom. But, um, you know, we do have uh, uh, some serious issues going on at the courthouse. We wouldn't be here if we didn't. And I can understand that, you know, we can all drive down a street and we can see if improvements need to be made or not. And we can look out of our homes and we can see if, you know, there's drainage issues or not. And we can debate those things vigorously. Uh, but it's uh, difficult for me to h get the public to understand about a courthouse because most of the public's never going to step foot in a courthouse. There's certainly nothing wrong with that, okay? But I've got to do that, obviously, when these kind of issues come up. So I can understand how people will not understand uh, completely what we're trying to do and maybe why. But I'm hoping that they understand we were elected to do a job and that if you look at every agency that is in that courthouse on a day-to-day -day basis, they all back and support this. Sheriff, the district attorney, clerk of court, and the judges, okay? And reason being is we have several. I don't know, we have limited time, so I won't be able to cover them all, but probably the top two are safety and space, okay? First and foremost being the safety. We have, on a regular criminal day, 50 to 100 inmates. Okay, sometimes more, all right, coming in there. And they're not just in there for five minutes. They're in there all day, all right. And they're on top of each other, which creates a volatile situation and a danger for them. They're right on top of the judges and their staff, which creates a dangerous situation. They're right on top of the attorneys, which creates another dangerous situation. And they're also right on top of the public because of the design of the courtrooms, which creates a dangerous situation. And my duty to do something about that I, at least I feel it is all right and I understand we don't have a building falling down around us I get that and that's maybe conventionally what we look to when we look to change and do things like this okay but that's how serious I feel these safety issues are all right that we can't wait any longer because the dockets are only getting bigger okay we know with the growth in this parish they're only getting bigger all right and again, I could go into more and more issues and more depth about that if, if you like. Uh, and then regarding space, we have four courtrooms. We have seven judges. We have one parish court judge, five district court judges, and then we have the, an administrative judge who hears uh, certain matters. Okay? So you don't have to be a math wizard to do those logistics. All right? And it's causing a lot of problems. Okay? And our dockets are just getting larger and larger and growing more and more. And again, what I have to look at is... Is that going to, are we going to be in an issue where it's going to take a, a year for somebody to get a divorce or get a custody matter taken care of? Is a violent criminal going to walk because we couldn't get them to trial in time within their constitutional rights? And these are things, no, it's not happening today. I'm not trying to tell you the sky's falling today. But these are things that are coming down the road. And we're getting dangerously close, and I don't want to be reactive. I want to be proactive, all right? And we've got to do something now because we know this is a long process. This isn't something that's going to, even if we do all decide, you know, happen tomorrow. So I think it's very important. Again, those are just a couple of the reasons. We came up with this funding idea on the filing fees, 
okay? And it's putting the cost of it on the litigants, all right? Again, I would love to not put the cost on anybody in an ideal world, but this was the best we could do, all right? We did a five-year study on the filings to make sure that what we're asking for is gonna cover the cost of the building and the maintenance on it, okay? And it does with plenty of cushion. We follow the same model that Livingston Parish did. They've been gracious to us and opened up their doors and their books. We've had several sit-downs with them to see how they did it, because they just recently did it. And it's a parish you know, close to us and of close size to us. And they showed us how they did it. They've never had one problem with one note or with one maintenance issue, to my knowledge, that they've explained to us, okay? Um, we've looked at the numbers of our filing fees, and even with this fee added to the filing fee, we're still below our neighbors, our neighboring parishes, and what they charge. All right, so our clerk is obviously already very reasonable in what she's charging and way below. And again, even with this fee added on, um, we're still going to be below our neighboring parishes. So, you know, we've, we've done a lot of due diligence. We've looked into it uh, a lot, and, um, you know, we believe this is the best course of action to go. Uh, thank you for your time, and I'll can answer any questions if you like. Councilman Kluwer. Thank you, Jason. Yes, sir. Tess and Bridget. Uh, I just want to let everybody know that this journey didn't just start a little while ago. It started a long time ago uh, when, uh, as the 23rd JDC grows and, and, and our parishes grow, that uh, the main load within that jurisdiction is Ascension Parish. And there's been several meetings over the past couple years and then last year Jason uh, you guys came Bridget all y'all came together in a good good committee with, with uh, good ideas to, to try to put it together but you did touch on the safety uh, I don't know how many of these council members of the council that have have spent any time in that courtroom you know to sit all day in a trial or get in and out or have something going on but it uh, it this this building evolved Okay, it, uh, it, you do have a lot of issues that put your employees and the public in, in danger. Uh, there's times when it makes it hard on, on uh, the sheriff's office to keep things straight. The new building is, from what I've seen of the conception, it's going to be great. It's, uh, it's, would you just kind of give us a briefing, or even maybe Bridget can, of who all is going to, who's all is going to be housed in there? And, it, it's just yeah so uh, again it's very conceptual right now we obviously nothing's final by any means but um, the judges of course uh, the clerk of court uh, we do have some uh, potential space set aside for the public defender's office and the district attorney's office councilman Turner I guess to speak on out I am there pretty often with the judges and just as a practical issue with the criminal matter because we do like to, some defense attorneys like to file speedy trial motions. If they can't get on the trial docket, you know, a lot of times they do get released without bond or a very small bond. You know, that's a, I understand Judge Verdict and Judge Stromberg's issue with that because, like I say, some defense attorneys take advantage of that because they don't have enough trial dates. <laughs> um, and that's a big issue. And also, the courtrooms are rather packed, especially on the drug days in front of Judge Stromberg. It's usually, it's more than standing room on, they almost have a line outside the door, and especially with the inmates in the back, if you need to meet with an inmate or they're literally right there on side the staff at, at the courthouse. And even when they're in a the box, they're still right there next to the public and it's kind of hard to keep everyone safe. I haven't seen any incidents, incidents but it's a very uh, real chance that something could happen if you have someone or an inmate get upset or someone they can't really control. Uh, you know, I don't really like the civil fees maybe going up because you know it might take money out of our pocket, but you know, that'd be fine in the long run because their fees are still a lot cheaper than in Baton Rouge and or in Livingston. So, you know, I, you know, support this. And I judge. can confirm for you that we have had incidents. Yes. Councilman Satterley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and um, thank you, Judge Vertigates. Um I don't know if we're going to hear from the other judges or, or the honorary um, folks that are here tonight, but um, I sort of got myself in trouble, but in so doing, maybe help my citizens out, uh, as I always do. Um, Judge, I, I, I put a poll out. It's less than 24 hours old. I didn't know we were going to be considering this so quickly on my Facebook site. 
Um, Because this is tied, correct me if I'm wrong, to um, State Rep. Sheck Snyder's House Bill, where I think, as you indicated, um, that bill required the civil litigants um, in lawsuits to pay these additional filing costs. Uh, No one said a lot about that, but I think what I read in the newspaper, to build the new courthouse, it's it's like $30. Um, The initial filing fee is $150, and subsequent filings are $30. Oh, $30, okay. And anyway, in conducting that poll, um, like I said, it didn't help me because I I was actually kind of surprised. I I thought it would run in favor, you know, with that amount of money and and so forth and and the safety issues that you you have um, so well spoke of in other issues. But um, I'm here to report tonight it has not. Um, this less than 24-hour poll with you know, only 42 respondents. And again, it's not scientific or anything, but 35 people do not support the bill. That's 83%. The most common, and maybe you could help me here, questions I'm getting from um, my constituents is, well, what's going to happen to, number one, the old courtroom facilities? seems like this parish, a lot of people believe, bug out of a facility like a mash unit and build something nice and new and then really don't have anything to do with the old facilities. Number two, lots of folks, quite frankly, feel that um, other revenue streams should be paying for the construction of the new courthouse and not the the litigants per se. And the third argument that I'm getting quite regularly now is that, uh, Doc, these are hard times. Um, You guys need to make do like we're all doing. and, and I'll stop there. I, I got to admit, I'm really torn on, on this particular vote. Um, and of course, whatever we do, I, I want the people to know out there that this is just a, a resolution. It doesn't mean that the um, House bill will actually pass or not. And a lot of people have a lot of turns yet to go and, and say things beyond just my, my poll. But maybe, Judge, you would want to respond to some of these mm-hmm. constituent concerns that sure. I have to deal with. Sure. Um, and like I said, I understand. Uh, most of the public doesn't have to deal with the courthouse on a daily basis or on a basis, any basis at all. So I can understand their difficulty in understanding what it takes and what goes on uh, at a courthouse. And it's because of a courthouse that they get to uh, speak freely on social websites like that and polls and things of that nature. So that's the importance of a courthouse and making sure that it runs properly. Um, you know, we will, we have been making do since day one, since the minute they opened those doors of that courthouse because it was inefficient on day one. Um, I can tell you that as in when I was an attorney and now as a judge there. Uh, so that's been over, what, I don't know, 10, 15 years, somewhere in that range. Um, and as far as, you know, when people's safety come into play, I don't really agree with making do at that point anymore. There are definitely mm-hmm. circumstances where you can make do, and there are some where you can't. And I think when people's safety are at issue, uh, that's <coughs> one of them where you can't. Um, I'm sorry. I, Maybe missed a couple of the other points you uh, wanted um, to address. Well, you, you addressed what's going to happen to the old facilities. If the old facility, I'm sorry, yeah. So there are definitely um, agencies that are already looking at that. They're not going to waste by any means, I can assure you. Um, I don't know if I have the authority to speak for those agencies and uh, who they are, if they're going to contact y'all themselves or, or what. Uh, so I don't want to speak out of turn. But, and I haven't been involved in all those conversations either. Um, but I can the ones that I do know of, those buildings are already um, being grabbed out by several different agencies that want that space. Yeah. So it is going to be used. I can that I can assure you, is and, it's, it's going to be used. And why and why should the litigants bear the burden as opposed to using other revenue streams? Well, what revenue streams do you speak of? Because um, you know, obviously these are these are constituents that right, believe that we have monies that, that should be paying for this. Yeah. Well, how are we doing it before we you know there before really you, are no before you would be asking streams. for money? How are we doing it? Maybe you could help me there. So again, you know, looking at other models, what other parishes have done, several other parishes have done it this way, and this was the best model they came up with. We've looked at, uh, you know, if you want to call it revenue streams or, or of that nature, and this was the best way we felt uh, we would be able to to accomplish it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilman Turner. I guess that's the point is, as well as what Doc is saying, as well as the revenue stream being civil litigants, the, the criminal cases are no filing fees. It's just the case as well as a petition for damages, um, divorce, and things of that nature. That's where all we're talking about. As well I'm as sorry. Yeah, I didn't know if you meant it like that. But yes, you can't do it on criminal cases. And uh, we're not doing it on recordation uh, 
fees as well, which you couldn't either way, even if we wanted to do it, because there's a, a law against that. I, so it, it's, it can only be on the civil side. Yeah, I, I think I think the public understands that, you know, okay. because what I did was I, I just posted an article and I think it had civil litigants, uh, a media source in the title. Okay. Councilman Johnson. Judge yes, Verdict, if after having the pleasure of serving on a jury in your, in your courtroom, I certainly see the need for what you have there, but I kind of think we're putting the cart before the horse here with the with the bond issue. I mean, we have we get questions from folks that we represent on spending this kind of money and doing that, but yet we've seen no. I have, I'm, I have, I'm as far as I know, it hasn't come before any committee, any kind of plan as far as what we're wanting to do. Um, the existing buildings, these other agencies want to take them over, but yet all this stuff comes out of our general fund to maintain them and all that and operate them. And I just don't see that is the revenue coming to us for that or. Yes, and so that's why it is a part of that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's fine. I, I just I would prefer, or much would much rather have preferred a, a more comprehensive plan or something brought forth to give us some backing on what we're fixing to do here, uh, before we just put out a resolution or send something to the legislature for authority to go out for this. Well, there there is more comprehensive <coughs> stuff out there. Maybe that's my fault in not uh, providing it accurately. I'm sort of new at this game, and maybe that's not a good excuse. But um, I'm just being honest with you. Um, and that is a part of the bill that would help to pay for any repurposing of the buildings that we're uh, leaving yeah, if it things go through. Um, and also part of the bill is for maintenance cost on the new building and also for part of the bill is on the note. Uh, and again, this is all coming from filing fees, okay? Not anything, not from any other source. So these are people that are using the courtroom. And that's who's bearing the burden. And I, we don't do that lightly. I understand that. But that's who's going to be bearing the burden. So, mm -hmm. And one of the other deficiencies of trying to renovate the existing building, I mean, what can it be used for other than what it was designed for? And, and how is it, how expensive is it going to be and how useful is it going to be to try to convert that into something else? Um, well, you know, again, you put me in an awkward position because, like I said, I don't know um, – have authority to speak of what other agencies were wanting to do with it uh, and I would have to get into that I guess to answer that question but they seem to feel it can easily be converted to what they want to do with it um, and it sounds like a very a reasonable plan um, and I'm sure you know, they're going to advise you all of that and update you on everything and, uh, in the process I, I'm not sure how that process goes but um, but yes um, those things so have all been thought of. And we've looked at, I'm sorry to cut you off, and we have looked at, was it possible to add on to this current building, somehow reconfigure that? We we had, you know, a, a, a firm look into that for us, and it was not, according I, to their findings. I, I just don't have the information in front of me to, to you know, I understand what the needs, and I agree with you. I don't, but as far as going forward with it, I don't, I don't have any of that information for and me I'll to make a good I'll be happy to decision. provide that to you and to anyone else. So when we, uh, President Matassa and I went to a went to a meeting, and the debt service, so these fees generate about two million dollars a year. <coughs> Excuse me. The debt service is in the range of one point three. The remainder of that 700000 a year is for a renovation and for maintenance of the building. The uh, potential occupant has committed to putting up money for the renovation cost. So, uh, you know, and I, I, don't, I don't mind uh, Judge Burgess's, but the sheriff is looking at, at the remaining space, and I think he's looking at something, you know, perhaps for a juvenile uh, facility or uh, I'm not sure exactly the use, but... He's looking at the entire building, and and he's got the you know he's there to contribute to the renovation cost. But how many employees are we going to have to hire to maintain and keep the building? Well, open? we have three hundred. Where their salaries coming from and all those other things like that? That's not none of that's been presented to we us. We have three hundred thousand dollars in the cash flow for the maintenance of of the facility. <laughs> Three hundred thousand a year for the ca and the cash flow for the maintenance of the facility. Now, if the the debt service is at the one point three, most people consider that uh, conservative. Though any uh, increase in, in revenues over the debt service obviously come to us for the maintenance. 
President Matassa. I can assure you before you start, um, before everything is finalized, we will come to you with a plan on this building on what it's going to be used for and everything. We're looking at a lot of different things right now. We have other agencies, but as uh, Bill told you, and, and Randy was at a couple of the meetings before with the sheriff's office that will work with us. And I can, I can tell you this, uh, since I've been president, the, the sheriff's been working with me on uh, funding things. Like, for example, he just finished uh, some officers in the salad port that he paid for out of his own pocket for $300,000. So it's not just a hearsay. He, he's putting his money where his mouth is. But before, before anything comes to play, we're going to have a plan presented to you that's going to be uh, well worth it, and we are under the gun with this juvenile situation, but we're waiting for some, some clarification on that so we don't have the, uh, everything together. Now, if it approves in the, in the House, as far as I know, they will start collecting funds, Judge. And so if they can start, they'll start collecting funds, and as soon as they start collecting funds, we will hire, we'll do an RFQ for an architect to to put the plans together. So one other reminder that this, remember, this is to start the process. There are right. other approvals that we'll have along the way. So this is this is not going to obligate us to borrow any money, not going to obligate us, <coughs> excuse me, to build any building. It's to start the process. But there's no justification for starting a process that's been presented to us up until tonight. I mean, why are we just getting... We should have had this through finance or somebody else to bring us the justification prior to tonight to go out for the bond. I mean, I'm, I agree. There's, there's a need. There's no doubt about it. But the public doesn't see the need, as we talked about before. And so the process should have been to where this is presented at finance to Joe to show the justification for going out for the bond. Shouldn't have. Any other comments on this side? Councilwoman Castle. Yes, a question and a comment. My question is, last night we saw projections of uh, residential uh, growth, uh, resident growth in Ascension Parish to around 190,000 people, 2030. Uh, will the design of the building accommodate 190,000 people in 2030 and beyond so that we are not, once again, uh, 10 years down the road, 12 years down the road, looking to rebuild again? Yes, exclamation point, yes, okay? If you think I want to go through this process again, <laughs> should I still be there? Um, trust me, I don't, okay? Uh, it's been an interesting process. So, yes, that's why we're looking at the money we're looking at. That's why we're looking at the size of the building we're looking at because we want it to be a 50-year building, a 7,500-year building, okay? We don't want to do this again in 10 years. And so it does give us that space if we're going to need an additional judge or two in the future saying that's happening tomorrow or anything, but in the future we've got that space. And we've got now that space, again, to have more hearing dates, more trial dates. You know, this only puts, only assures, guarantees more work on every judge, okay? So, you know, not many people are coming to you saying, give me more work, all right? But that's how serious we believe the situation is, all right? So, yes, it, uh, that is definitely... Uh, we have, I think we're looking at somewhere around eight courtrooms, you know, so we're definitely trying to anticipate for that growth. And you'll be presenting a, a, a more clearly defined package about with regard to the use of the other building, what this building might look like, what the cost might be per, at some point in time to the finance committee so that it can be thoroughly vetted by this body as a finance committee and then move on to the council. We certainly can. Councilman Lawler. Boy, I relish the opportunity to sit on this side and ask questions <laughs> to the judge. <laughs> this could go on forever. No. Um, first of all, as far as justifications mm -hmm. go, um, I think this is somewhat similar to what we saw with bonding out money for transportation. Is We're at a time right now where the interest rates are lower. Is that correct? Or lower than where they are projected to be in the future. He can uh, why don't you introduce yourself. He Is can that definitely answer that Ryan? question better than me. <clears throat> Jim Ryan. Yes, sir, that's correct. Uh, Jim Ryan with Government Consultants, uh, Councilman Lawler. Okay. Uh, and the reason I say that is we are just, I think you alluded to this or said this before, we're just starting the process. We're not being bound to take out any money at this time. Would that be correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. 
Um, I think Councilwoman Caso was very um, a student questioning about the future. We heard about the future and planning for the future. Uh, that's what we're doing right here is we're planning for the future. If we don't do it now, this is going to have to come up in the next couple of years, maybe the next five years, ten years, whatever it may be. But we're expecting population growth, and that does lead to more lawsuits. That leads to more litigation. There is a real, as uh, Councilman Turner stated, there's a real risk that criminals could be set free because we don't give them their constitutional right to a speedy trial. Is that correct? Correct. Um, as far as, I think that's most of my questions were asked, uh, I, I answered. I do have one question about bonding capacity because I've heard some concerns about this and um, we may have another speaker on this. Councilman Nola, you had, we yeah. talked briefly about that earlier. And the reason that this will not affect the parish's bonding capacity is because of the fact that it's self-funded. I mean, it, it, through the clerk's office, it'll generate its own funds that'll pay for these bonds. So it will not affect the bonding capacity of the parish, you know, if, if the parish wants to do other bonds. Okay, very good. Um, I believe that's all the questions I have. I will state that uh, a couple months ago, I sat in Judge Tur I say sat. I stood in Judge Turner's courtroom for jury duty because there were not nearly enough seats to fit everybody in there. They probably had 20 people standing up for two hours waiting to get a seat in the courtroom. It's not fair to do to the citizens of this parish, and it's hard to go sit on jury duty. People don't always want to do it, and believe me, they want to do it less when they have to stand for two hours only to be sent you know, sent off and not having done anything. So I think this is very, uh, very critical to the future of our parish. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, just to note, to elaborate on what you had said earlier, uh, we updated our model today, and just based on the last five years. Can you get a little closer to the mic? Yeah, yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Just to elaborate what you said, on, said earlier a moment ago, we updated our models today, uh, and just based on the last five years' numbers, no projection in increases at all, but just based on the last five year filing numbers that we got from the clerk, the, the excess over debt service would be about um, $550,000 a year on an annual basis that you would have for maintenance, operation, renovations, the other sort of stuff like that. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions, comments by the council, uh, Councilman Joseph? Just, do y'all have a site where y'all want to put this uh, courthouse? Yes, yeah, so we were looking on the, uh, I guess if you're looking at it, it'd be the right side of where the new parish building is, that green space there. Okay. Councilwoman Castle. I'm sorry, I follow up. I, what you said reminded me. We built the glass house over there for, for $5 million. I had a question earlier about the cost of this building. There were some significant um, estimates from what I heard, um, upwards of $20 million. Uh, I was able to ask um, another member of this body for explanation, got an adequate explanation, but I believe for the, for the benefit of the public, it might be helpful if you would elaborate on why the uh, cost of the building of the courthouse is significant by comparison to something like we built yeah. as an administration building. Uh, well, it's several factors, um, so I'll try and answer some the best I can. I'm not an architect or a, a builder by any means, um, so I'm sure they can answer that better once we get further along in the process. Um, but uh, one, because of the space, and of course with, uh, we need parking too. You have to consider that. That goes into play as to where you know, you're limited to where you can do it. Um, so as you know, the parking right now is woefully inadequate uh, when we have uh, court. So this space, we wanted to look at, would it provide a space for the building, one, and then also the adequate parking to go along with it. According to these guys that did the study, they said yes. Um, so the building's gonna have to go up, though, to afford us that kind of space for parking. So we can't go with, we have to go up. And so obviously that's gonna add to your cost. And courtrooms are expensive. So when we're looking to do eight of them, okay? And we're looking at about an 80,000 square foot building. So. Uh, that's why you're looking at that cost because you have to look at the sound and the technology and the furnishings and the trim work, all that you have to do inside of a courtroom. Uh, and that cost jumps uh, as I was learning in this process. Uh, so that's, that's what you're looking at, uh, one of the reasons. And of course, like I said, it's also going to uh, accommodate the clerk of court. 
And so they, she has to have certain type of buildings because she has to store records and things of that nature. Um, so that, that's probably the main thing, hopefully, to answer your question as to a lot of the, the high cost on it. But, uh, Thank you. Councilman Lawler. Very briefly, for point of reference, the East Baton Rouge Parish Courthouse, uh, it's got a $100 million bond for that. And that's really pretty much in line with where we are based on population, about a quarter of that population. So we're not out of the realm of what is standard. Yeah, and the Livingston Courthouse, it cost them 20, I think it was right under 20. I'm saying 20 million, but I don't want to misspeak, uh, but it might have been 19 something. But it was right around 20 million for their courthouse, which is uh, roughly, I think there's a little bit more square footage than ours, uh, what we're looking at at least. But then, then that was also built, I think there's about five years old now, so that's cost from five years ago. Um, so again, that was around 20 million to build that uh, courthouse, which again, roughly the same size. Councilman Kluat. Yeah, I just uh, Jason had alluded to the to uh, to be able to encompass the eight courtrooms and make it safe, a safe place. Mm -hmm. This building will have mul you know multiple stories, isolated elevators for the for the upper floors, where the uh, area for the sheriff's office, holding holding facilities between courtrooms. Um, this for well, to help. Uh, the people with their, their legal defense, the, the shortage of conference rooms, they'll have independent conference rooms there and uh, facilities where the, the, the lawyers can, can uh, work with, uh, with their defendants. And All very good it, points. I did a poor job of explaining that there. It's, ju it's just... It's going to be a whole isolated takes. corridor where the inmates never will be they around the public. the public. They'll have their own elevator. They'll have their own hallways. They'll have their isolated area for you know holding cells and when they need to speak with their attorney like any modern day courtroom is designed now i felt sure that randy would help you out there <laughs> <laughs> okay councilman Sarah. yeah just to follow up no, no more questions but a comment um i guess i i question whether we should even though we have the precedent of this of this council on the transportation bond alone big one too 20 25 million it whether one should just borrow money because interest rates are low especially when we are are, are using other people's money um, taxpayers money to to secure or, or better yet maybe to pay back look at that way the loan um, we have and we learned that from SSA consultants last night and untrusting our public in local government because people want to see detailed plans no more just I don't mean that this is one as an example but knee, knee jerk reaction by this council um, as councilman Johnson said um, we need to be sure we don't have a, a horse in front of the cart um, one out cliche haste makes waste in fact to me th th does the state legislators really need the backing of this council if this is such such a good deal. Maybe we should just let the people, all capitals, the people, battle this thing out down at, at the Capitol. Thank you for listening. So I might just comment on that, Councilman Saturday. The, the, you need both of these. It has to be approved by the state legislature, and then this is to start the bond process. So they're not, I, I one is not dependent. You know, I understand the difference, they're. but I, I, and I know it would help them get what they want, but I'd, I'd be. Councilman Johnson didn't, didn't say this. I'd be a lot more comfortable if we we're to the stage to where everybody down at the state legislature said this is this is great, and uh, we, we we want we we're going to pass Does House Bill, whatever the number is. Do you know the status of the bill? Can Go I comment ahead. on that? Yeah. yeah, it actually passed on the House floor today, eighty-eight to zero, in okay. a vote. So, so that does exemplify my point. Why do they even need this resolution? We we'll have to have this resolution to initiate the bonding process. Oh, so they don't need it. We, they we don't need it. We, we need it. To we, we, we're sort of determined tonight. It's an inevitable consequence. So why don't we begin early, as, as Mr. Lawler said, and, and take advantage of low interest rates That's and correct. Other, other reasons. That's correct. Councilman Kluwer. Yeah, I'd just like to. Uh, even, even if the people, you know, the people I poll don't want it. Yeah. <coughs> sorry, Randy. No, sorry. I just. We move. <coughs> Jason and the judges, clerk court's office, the DA, 
and and everyone wants to move forward with this, not not because the taxes are low. Okay, interest this is low. Yeah, I mean interest is low. Excuse right. me, because interest is low. This is a need. This would come up whether interest was high or low. Right. Right now, uh, and I just want to remind everyone that we are the keepers of all the public buildings. When the sheriff expanded the jail, it came in front of us. And every every public building is going to come in front of us. So, okay, this, so is, this is part of a process. So I have one other. Uh, so Sheriff Wiley did call me, and uh, he could, he had another commitment, couldn't be here tonight, but he wanted to make sure that I mentioned that, that he supports this project 100%. So I would like to ask if uh, Judge Stromberg would like to say anything, or Clerk Hannah, you guys don't want to get on the hot seat, I understand. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is desperately needed, and I just want y'all to know that I do support it, and my office is going to be the one collecting these fees. So um, that's a great responsibility for us, but that's how much I think we need this. In addition to that, I'm operating out of four different locations in the parish um, at the tune of about $3 million that the clerk's office paid for all of those locations, right. which will be turned over to the parish government for use as they see fit. So that's going to give you know some parish um, entities um, space that may be needed without the bill of $3 million that was paid by the clerk's office. So I just wanted to, mm -hmm. to make that comment, and um, I'll be glad to answer any questions y'all may have. Right. Councilman Joseph has a question. Um, and Hannah, how this will affect the courthouse on uh, the west side when you say you're going to consolidate with your office? I will definitely still have an office there with uh, several employees and the west side will not be affected in any way in any service that they receive now and the seat with the filing of the records and everything it was still any any service they receive now from filing a lawsuit rec recording something marriage licenses birth certificates passports everything will be the same they will receive all the same services Councilman Lawler. I'd just like to make a motion that we move forward with this. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any opposition? Uh, Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Councilman Turner. Yes. Councilman Satterley. I want everybody to know this is a really tough vote for me, but no. <laughs> Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Yes. Councilman Kluat. Yes. Councilman Joseph. Yes. Councilman Lawler. Yes. Councilwoman Casso. Yes. Councilman Todd Lambert. Yes. Councilman Cagnolotti. Yes. Councilman Johnson. Yes. Chairman Dawson. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Move back on the agenda to item seven. The consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. I have to read it. Oh, you have to read it. I'm sorry. <laughs> A service agreement, Wartex Time LLC, for the reporting and tracking required by the Affordable Care Act for Human Resources Department. Item B, memorandum of understanding between Ascension Parish Government and Ascension Parish Assessor's Office for cost sharing and acquiring newly updated 2017 aerial imagery parish to provide funds in the not to exceed amount of $17,500. Item C, substantial completion for the flood repair of the Mosquito Control Office, approval pending punch list completion. Item D, amendment number one to contract between the Bug Man and Ascension Parish Government for an additional $200 for the location of Henderson Bayou Pump Station for pest control, total amount not to exceed $9,558. Item E, amendment number one, River Parish Security Systems and Ascension Parish Government to add an additional location, Parish Utilities of Ascension for lease, maintenance, monitoring, bird, additional $204 per quarter for this location. Approval of settlement of claim loss for a recreational building during August 2016 flood event located at 95404 Stringer Bridge Road, Santa Mar, Louisiana. Total amount is $166,000. Item G, renewal of intergovernmental agreement between the Town of Sorrento and Ascension Parish Government 
to allow the parish to enforce on behalf of the town of Sorrento the Louisiana State Uniform Construction Code within the town's corporate limits. Item H, authorization to amend the contract between Ascension Parish Government and M&H Builders, Inc. for the DPW building retrofit, adding change order number 001 to increase the contract sum by $51,575 and add an additional 75 days to the contract time. Total amended contract will be $439,000. $575. Item I, bid items to accept lowest responsive bid. Radiator coil repairs and debris removal at Marvin Bro Pump Station, Delcon, LLC, $91,350. A 30-pound riprap per ton, Lafarge, $45.84 per ton delivered. Item J, substantial completion, Lamar Dixon Expo Center Gym. Item K, change order number one, Butch Gore Lighting Project. Item L, substantial completion, Butch Gore Lighting Project. Item M, approval of the temporary suspension of transportation master plan components of task order number one to proceed with Move Ascension Transportation Initiative. Item number N, roads for acceptance into parish maintenance system, Dutchtown Meadows, Dutchtown Meadows Way, 470 feet, Deventer Drive. 862 feet, Amsterdam Avenue, 1,050 feet, Tilburg Pass, 268 feet, Rotterdam Avenue, 1,036 feet, Almere Pass, 505 feet, Eagles Landing Subdivision, second filing, Part A, third filing, Part A, Golden Eagle Drive, 1,982 feet, Eagles Eye Street, 1,000 feet, Eagles Perch Drive, 264 feet, Feather Ridge, 156 feet, Soaring Flight Drive, 136 feet. Item O, approval of new signage on Duplessis Road. Duplessis Road, or is there any uh, desire to remove any of these items from the consent agenda? Motion to move on the consent agenda. Second. A motion by Councilman Lambert, Todd Lambert, and a second by Councilman Cagnolotti. Any discussion? Any opposition? Consent agenda is adopted. Item number nine, approval of Louisiana River Road Steamboat Overlook Interpretive Center contract between Parish of Ascension and Stewart and Company General Contractors, LLC, Ms. Collins. I skipped eight because we already spent an hour oh, okay. on eight. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I, went, I was ready. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chairman, members of the council. This is, um, I'm happy to report, it's taken us a long time, that um, this is a grant that came from the Federal Highway Administration. It was the scenic byways. We had uh, the lieutenant governors from the tourist com uh, office and DOTD joined together to make this happen. Ascension Parish voted to be the sponsor for this program. And we are, have gone out for a bid for this, and we have a contract that we would like to have your approval to authorize the parish president to sign and let us move forward to uh, begin the process of building this uh, beautiful uh, museum. A motion. Second. I have a second motion by Councilman Kluot, any any discussion, any opposition? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Collins. Item number 10, acceptance of lowest responsive bid for tilting, skillet, brazing, pans, gas, two units, and Ms. Berthelot. Thank yes. you. On May 9th, 2017, the Purchasing Department received six bids for the tilting skillet brazing pans, two units that's going to be utilized at the Ascension Parish Jail. The bids were received from ALAC Refrigeration, NOLA Restaurant Supply and Design, Sam Tell and Son Incorporated, Claire Hotel Restaurant and Supply, Douglas Equipment, and Culinary Depot. After review, the Purchasing Department 
and the Ascension Parish Jail recommends accepting the lowest responsive bid from NOLA Restaurant and Supply and Design and to authorize the parish president to enter into any agreement or contract for this equipment. Motion. Second. A motion by Councilman Clue. I second by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Any discussion? Yes. Of Councilwoman Castle. I just wanted you to make mention of the cost of two skillets, please. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, it was budgeted for uh, $38,500. Um, and let me see if I have that in here, Terry. Hold on. The total bid for the both skillets installed will be twenty-seven thousand five hundred and eighty dollars. Any further questions, discussion? Any opposition? Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Brokelock. Okay, uh, I have four speakers on item number eleven. Uh, Mr. I'm Chairman, sorry. thank you. <laughs> the roof. <laughs> and the roof. So, uh, 10A, we read this earlier as a, uh, this is a request to, to hire a engineering firm to begin the, the work on the roof repairs on uh, the, the West Ascension Courthouse, among other buildings. And let's see, we have Ms. Johnson to give us a background. Okay. You ready for me? I apologize. Yes. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you, Chairman and uh, Council. Um, we have a program that we've put together, several roofs. Uh, we'd like to go out for bid for it fairly quickly because we, or it will be a work of public works required to have a design on all of these roof repair and installations. Um, so we need to ramp that up very quickly. Uh, it's already, um, you know, they're having problems already. They were identified and budgeted. So we need to get a design done for all of the roofs. Uh, we're asking to get a contract not to exceed 49999 uh, with an engineering firm to pursue that so that we can very quickly go to the procurement process. Councilwoman Castle. Yes. I just want to make a comment. The roof's been leaking, from what I understand, about two years at one of the buildings. Yes. And while I, I share everyone's concern about that, we have a process. This kind of work goes through finance. It is, it is identified. It goes through finance. We have a process that gets us to this place where we don't end up like we did earlier with an hour-long discussion about the fact that the information isn't there. Uh, we don't know what we're doing. Um, so I would just like to ask that something not become urgent at 4 o'clock on the afternoon of a council meeting with, that allows, you know, that has this kind of expenditure of the public's funds when we have had a roof that's been leaking for two years. Uh, I'd like to see us go through the, the process dictated by the charter to ensure that all of these expenditures are appropriately vetted for the public. And that's the only comment I have about it. Otherwise, I'm happy to support it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. President Matasco. Um, Council, this, uh, you, you write about the one that's been leaking. We were ready to bid it. And then when Amy started putting it all together and we went to O'Neill to, to bid it out, he, he quoted us that because it, we owned all the buildings, you had to put it all together. And it's going to be maybe a half a million dollars. So we had to get an architect. We did not, we have never got an architect to do any of our buildings. So this was a law that we, that's, that, that came down this week and that's, that's why we're, where we are. Well, I appreciate the compliance <coughs> with, the, with, with the need, but I, I think that- I understand. You know, I just like to see sure. us properly vet things through the, through the appropriate channels. Thank you. Further questions, comments? Any opposition? Hearing none, thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, now. Did you, did you get a motion on <laughs> a second? I didn't get a motion. Sure motion. I have a motion by Councilman Kluot. Second. <laughs> second by Councilman Joseph. Now, or is there any further discussion? Is there any opposition? The motion carries. Thank you. Watching me closely. 
Okay, uh, item number 11, we have some speakers, and the uh, first one will be Bryce Cox. Did I read that correctly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would just like to thank the uh, council for the job y'all are doing and the ability to come talk to y'all tonight. Um, one of the things that came up in the zoning board recommendation was to not deny this piece of property. It's located on the corner of Post Office Road on Highway 73 on the east side. There is no commercial property from Post Office Road all the way to the village grocery except for the Catholic Church, which has been there 150 years. My wife corrected me last month when I went to the meeting, and I'd said 80 years. Uh, it's been there about 150 years. I don't even know if that's considered commercial. On the west side, they had turned one down right across the street from this one, right on the corner of Alice Pro Lane, which is where I live, um, last month. Um, and there's no commercial property on the west side from the concrete plant by the railroad track all the way down to the firehouse. Past the firehouse, there is some more commercial. Um, we feel like there's a wreck there about every other day all of us that live around there can hear the sirens and, you know, see, hear the police and the fire trucks and stuff like that because there's, there's a wreck there about at least twice a week. And we feel like additional traffic there would um, just enhance that more. Um, and the last thing that was brought up by the young lady that presented it was they wanted to sell the piece of property and they wanted to increase the value because it would be commercial. That should never, ever be a reason to accept rezoning a piece of property to commercial just so that the raise of the value of that piece of property. And so I just want to say that, and I appreciate y'all letting me talk tonight. Thank you, sir. Uh, David Oop. I, too, would like to uh, thank y'all for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, I really have about seven reasons why we should not rezone this area. Uh, and I guess the, the, the most important one, if you just look at the history of denials that we've had in the last year in this same area, uh, from, say, the uh, fire station to this point, the property in front of Longwood subdivision was denied. The intersection of Highway 73 North of uh, White Road was denied. Intersection of Highway 73 south of Alice Lane was denied, and we're going right across the street. I don't think there's any reason that we should now start granting uh, or rezone that to one of the commercial areas. And uh, if you did that, it would be an encroachment into the residential zone that is, you know, is clearly specified on the zoning map that this is a residential area. And once you do one, you're going to do the next one. And right on down the line. And also, we feel that Post Office Road is a great demarcation line. On the left side, going towards the airline, there's some commercial developed. The auto mechanic shop was uh, grandfathered in, and you go towards the church, that's a good place to start. I'm not going to mention traffic, because that's already was mentioned. Uh, the beauty of the parish. It's a very beautiful, picturesque road there, a lot of live Oak trees, I have two registered live oak trees in my yard, the beautiful church, the beautiful old house that down Oak Alley Lane like, um, beautiful area. And this is really prime residential land. It didn't flood. We have good people that's living in this area. I live diagonal across from this particular spot. Uh, it's not only affecting the people that's living on 73, but people that's living off of it into these various little subdivisions, and also adjacent to uh, Seven Oaks subdivision, a large residential area there also. And when you really look at this one and a half, one and three quarters acres of the land, you know, it really doesn't do that much to be of benefit to the parish or the community to make this uh, uh, commercial. So I, I hope you all uh, see the light to uh, support the uh, Zoning Commission to de deny this request. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, James Kennison. Good 
James, <coughs> excuse me, I'm James Kennison. Um, I'm not sure I can add very much to what those two guys have added up. My wife grew up right across the street from this property. Her, her name is Winifred Revo Kennison. We've got a little, uh, when her mother and father passed away, we bought some property from the rest of the family. We now have a little lane called Rebo Lane, and we've got some of our family that lives down that road. So in, in our opinion, this is still a residential area. If you look at the zoning map, like I said, it's, it's zoned residential, really from Post Office Road all the way down to the fire station and beyond. Um, so my only comment, I agree with what those guys said. I just wish that y'all would agree with what the Planning and Zoning Commission already has agreed to, that uh, we deny the uh, rezoning. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Item 11 is a Zoning Review ID PZ 1263.17 for Connie Edmondson, located on the east of LA Highway 73, approximately 200 feet south of Post Office Road to the Ascension Parish Zoning Map from Medium Intensity Residential, RM, to Mixed Use 2, MU2. To accept or deny, Zoning Commission recommends denial. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Saturday. I make a motion that we accept the Zoning Commission recommendation to deny the rezoning of the Edmonston second. property. A well, motion and a, by Councilman Saturday, a second by Councilwoman Casso. Any discussion? Any opposition? Review is denied. Item number 12, Zoning Review ID PZ 1287.17 track 0.57 acres for Rebecca Denise Sifras, located on the northeast corner of LA Highway 621, Kenty Road, and Roddy Road to amend the Ascension Parish zoning map from medium intensity residential to mixed use. To accept or deny, Zoning Commission recommends denial. Recommend that we uh, follow the zoning. Councilman, motion by Councilman Lambert to deny the Second. rezoning. Second by Councilman Satterley. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion to deny carries. Introduction of ordinances. Introduction of ordinance budget amendment number two to amend the 2017 budget item number 13. Motion to introduce. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Casso, second by Councilman Lambert. Any discussion, any opposition? Motion's introduced. Item number 14, introduction of ordinance to adopt the updated tra transportation impact fee schedule and map. Motion to introduce. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Casso, second by Councilman Joseph. Any discussion, Councilman Satterley? Yes, I, I would just, um, I realize this is gonna be introduced tonight and we're gonna be talking about it further. Um, when, when we decide on the ordinance or not, but I would just like to ask why are we, uh, did we pay Duncan and Associates uh, the, the money, a lot of money, to study and update their 10-year-old traffic impact fees um, as it relates to the schedule, particularly to uh, turn right around now and, and not uh, accept their recommendation since it looks to me in our packet information that we're asking to do 70% of Duncan's 100% base recommendations. Um, and I might further add that, that when I look down at the at that recommended schedule line, 14 of 25 land use um, types result in either a zero or actually a negative, a negative number, which to me means we would be charging impact fees that are even less than what Duncan had recommended over a full 10 years ago. So, um, I'm, I'm going to uh, object to the introduction, and, and hopefully we'll explore this further uh, later. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Councilman Turner. I just want to make sure what we're to I'm introduce. Voting for yes is to introduce, introduce the yes. ordinance. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yes. Councilman Satterley. No. Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Yes. Councilman Cluat. Yes. Councilman Joseph. Yes. Councilman Lawler. Yes. Councilwoman Casso. Yes. Councilman Todd Lambert. Yes. Councilman Cagnolotti. Yes. Councilman Johnson. Yes. Chairman Dawson. Yes. Introduced. Item number 15, public, hearing, public hearings ordinances. 
Item number 15, read, reading of ordinance, budget amendment number one to amend the 2017 budget. Mr. Parrington. In ordinance to amend the ordinance approving, adopting, appropriating 2017 operating and capital budgets for the parish of Ascension, adopted by Central Parish Council on the 17th day of November 2016. Section one, the Central Parish Council hereby ordains that the ordinance approving, adopting, and appropriating 2017 operating and capital budgets for the parish of Ascension is by amended, approved, and appropriated as follows. Operating budget, fire district number one, expenditures, operating <coughs> supplies, 100,000, acquisition vehicles and equipment, 50,000, acquisition <coughs> land and building, 133,000, contract payments, $300,000. Capital budget, note all the construction projects listed below were budgeted and completed in 2016. However, the budget, these projects are now complete, to be completed in 2017. The budgets are being funded as follows. Office building construction fund, DPW East, expenditures, architecture and services, 3,500, contract payments, 203,000. Waste and wastewater construction fund, Louisiana 42 sewer project expenditures, engineering fees, 25,000, contract payments, 545,000. Fire district number three, construction fund, fire station number four, expenditures, professional services, 28,000, contract payments, $623,500. Community block, block grant fund, expenditures, CDBG housing rehabilitation, 174,000. Hazard mitigation grant fund, project Lamar Dixon improvements, task one and two, expenditures, appropriate Appropriations and grants, $900,000. CDGB Construction Fund Project Lamar Dixon Improvement Task 1 Expenditure, CBD Lamar Dixon Improvements, $198,000. Park Construction Fund Projects Lamar Dixon Gym Renovations, Lamar Dixon Soccer Complex, Sign and Donaldsonville Field Pole Lighting Project Expenditures and uh, Appropriations and Grants, $294,000. Contract Payments, $1,618,500. The one that submitted to a vote to vote thereon was as follows. Item number 16, public hearing to consider an ordinance budget amendment number one to amend the 2017 budget. Motion to open public hearing. Motion by Councilwoman Casso, second by Councilman Lambert. Any opposition? Motion to close. A motion by Councilman Todd Lambert, second, second by Councilman Cagnolotti to close the public hearing. Any, op any discussion, any opposition? Public hearing closed. Move to ordinance, Mr. Chairman. Second. Item number 17, motion by Councilman Todd Lambert, seconded by Councilman Joseph to move the ordinance budget amendment number one to amend the 2017 budget. Any, any discussion? Any opposition? Ordinance is approved. Item number 18, reading of ordinance to amend Ascension Parish zoning map from medium intensity residential to small planned unit development, SPUD, located at the northeast end of Dutchtown Point Avenue, approximately 1,500 feet north of LA Highway 74 Zoning Review ID PZ 1209.17, Lakeside Estate, Lakeside Oaks at Dutchtown for John Fetzer, Old Dutchtown Apartments, LLC. Uh, Mr. Parrington. This ordinance amends the official zoning designation of 13.121 acre track for medium intensity residential to small plan unit development. The rezone is identified as zoning review PZ 1209.17, a 13.121 acre track being designated as lot XA X1A, whereas the Central Parish the Local Government Subdivision is defined by Article 6, Section 44, Louisiana Constitution 1974, whereas the Parish of Ascension is the governing responsible body of the zoning and regulations within the jurisdiction. Whereas Article 6 of the Home Rule Charter of Ascension Parish adopted May 4th, 1993, identifies the process and manner which adopt ordinances regulating the lands of the parish. Whereas the official zoning map of Ascension Parish was last adopted February 18, 2016. Whereas the Parish Council reserves the authority to make changes to the official zoning map by ordinance. This request has been processed into compliance with the procedure set forth. Be it ordained the Ascension Parish Governing Authority of the official zoning map, Ascension Parish is amended to reflect the property identified as Exhibit A, a small plan unit development as the official zoning designation. In the event any portion of the ordinance is ever held invalid or unconstitutional by any reason, by any court of competent jurisdiction over it, such portions shall be deemed separate, distinct, independent provisions and shall not affect the validity of remaining portions of the ordinance. The effective date of this ordinance shall be in full effect as permitted by law. The exhibits are the legal description, the plat map, and the aerial zoning map. The ordinance has been submitted to a vote. The vote thereon was as follows. Open the public hearing. Second. Motion by Councilman Satterley, second by Councilwoman Castle to open the public hearing. Motion to close. For a motion by Councilman Saturday, second by Councilman Todd Lambert to close the public hearing. 
Item number 20, ordinance to amend the Ascension Parish zoning map from medium intensity residential RM to, sm to small planned unit development, SPUD, located on the northeast end of Dutchtown Point Avenue, approximately 1,500 feet north of LA Highway 74, zoning review ID PZ-1209.17, Lakeside Oaks at Dutchtown for John Petzer, Old Dutchtown Apartments, LLC. Move it. A motion by Councilman Satterley to move the ordinance. Second. Second by Councilwoman Casso. Any, any discussion? Any opposition? Motion carries. Ordinance is moved. Item number 21, reading of ordinance to declare surplus and authorize the sale and or transfer of miscellaneous movable equipment. Mr. Parrington. To declare surplus and authorize the sale and or transfer of miscellaneous movable equipment, whereas the parish of Ascension has certain assets that are no longer viable to retain, whereas these assets no longer serve or have any public purpose, whereas the parish of Ascension desires to declare said assets as surplus and provide for the sale or transfer of the same. Whereas it be entered in the Ascension Parish Council Act in its capacity as the governing authority that it hereby declares a listing of assets attached here to and made a part of Exhibit A as surplus and authorizes the sale or transfer of the same. In the event any portion of the ordinance ever held invalid or unconstitutional by any, by any reason, by any court of competent jurisdiction over such portion shall be deemed separate, a separate, distinct, and independent provision shall not affect the relief of any portions of the ordinance. The ordinance shall be full effect as permitted by law. The ordinance has been submitted to a vote. The vote thereon was as follows. Public hearing. Motion by, motion by Councilman Lambert. Second. Second by Councilwoman Castle to open the public hearing. Motion by Councilman Cagnolotti. Second by Councilman Todd Lambert to close the public hearing. Now, item number 23, I have a motion to move the ordinance to declare surplus and authorize the sale and or transfer of miscellaneous Second. movable equipment owned by the Parish of Ascension. Seconded by Councilman Kluot. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion carries. Ordinance is moved. Item 24. We'll motion by Cagnolati. <laughs> Second. Second. Second by, by Councilman Lawler. Any opposition? Meeting's adjourned. <laughs>